This week in Jamaica now, controversy over a commissioner for the Tivoli inquiry. The opposition rebuts the government. Man beaten by Trelawney police succumbs. Why his children couldn't see him on his hospital bed. Death squads in the forest. I saw the pool of the man's chin being torn off with this other bullet. An ex-policeman speaks on the record about extrajudicial killings and a longer wait for cartel verdict. The details of these and other stories coming up after the break. Get the Gleaner Classifieds app for BlackBerry and be the first to know. Search by item or location, search entire listings, save results for reference later, and even call directly from the app. It's that easy. Download the Gleaner Classifieds app in February and get one month free. I'm Damian Mitchell and this is Jamaica Now. West Kingston MP Desmond McKenzie is rejecting claims by the government that the opposition had two weeks to give an opinion on the proposed commissioners for the Tivoli inquiry. Mr. McKenzie has been leading the charge against the inclusion of attorney at law of Belma Hilton on the three-member panel to inquire into the May 2010 West Kingston operation that left more than 70 people dead. The MP claims that the government is being malicious by including Hilton, who served as a counsel to the 2002 commission that probed another operation in West Kingston. Mr. McKenzie says whether the opposition responded, it is wrong for the government to use Mrs. Hilton especially given controversial comments she made at the 2002 inquiry. Hilton had said she couldn't understand why the police and the soldiers should not shoot at gunmen when women and children placed themselves as buffers. The other commissioners are former Barbadian Chief Justice Sir David Simmons and retired Court of Appeal Judge Justice Hazel Harris. There are calls for hospitals to review their policies to accommodate underage visitors in extreme circumstances. The calls follow the death of Kamosa Clark, the inmate who was beaten to a vegetative state by policemen at the Falmouth Police lockup last October. Two of Clark's three children are below the age of 12 and were blocked by the Cornwall Regional Hospital from seeing their father. Mr. Clark died on Tuesday, 48 hours after his eldest child had gone to visit him. With his death, charges against two of the four officers implicated in the beating are expected to be upgraded to more serious offenses. Former policeman Alwyn Morgan has come on the record supporting claims that death squads exist in Jamaica's security forces. The police high command has denied reports that senior officers give permission for alleged criminals to be killed. But Mr. Morgan says he has witnessed a soldier on an operation shooting a mentally ill man who posed no threat. Mr. Morgan says he and others on the operation were forced to lie that the man was killed after attacking the security force. I have worked with some policemen who really put their lives on the line to, to guard us while we sleep, and they've done a good job at it. On the other hand, there have been some who it has been very, a very shameful, a very bad and terrible experience. The Independent Commission of Investigations is probing the allegations of death squads in the police force. In the Vibes Cartel murder trial, there have been more delays because of juror unavailability. Presiding Judge Lennox Campbell told the jurors on Wednesday that they should return to court this Thursday. At that time, Campbell is expected to begin his summation. Initially, the judge had told jurors to return to court at 10 a.m. on Friday of last week. However, the jury foreman responded saying one of the jurors had some urgent business to attend to on Friday and would not be available. On Monday, another juror has a medical test which may extend into Tuesday. And with Wednesday being a public holiday, Ash Wednesday, the next available day is Thursday. The Jamaican government has relaxed visa requirements for Chinese tourists. Minister with Responsibility for Information, Senator Sandria Faulkner, says Chinese visitors will now be able to visit Jamaica for up to 30 days without a visa. And the Tourism Minister, Dr. Wickham McNeil, says the move will help to strengthen Jamaica's relationship with China. Up to now, Substantial growth in China has not been possible as many Chinese citizens have to travel to the Jamaican embassy in Beijing to acquire a visa. The tourism ministry says it will use an upcoming trade show to woo travel agents and airlines in a bid to secure more Chinese visitors to the island. Another peace march was held last week in Dunkirk, eastern Kingston, as residents hope for an end to the violence and fear gripping the community. East Kingston MP Philip Paulwell told dozens of residents of his dream for unity across the constituency. My dream is that another Sunday will come when not only Rockport, but we move from there right across the entire constituency of East Kingston and Port to say a change has to come.
come, enough is enough. The marches have been prompted by the Valentine's Day murders of a 17-month-old child and a man. A couple was injured as they tried to protect their baby from thugs who wanted to kill the child in reprisal. The Court of Arbitration for Sports says it will soon provide its reasons for clearing Olympian Veronica Campbell-Brown of doping charges. The court cleared Campbell-Brown last week following a secret appeal against her two-year ban imposed by the IAAF. It's understood that the court upheld Campbell-Brown's appeal in relation to the collection of the urine sample which turned in the positive result for a diuretic which is a masking agent for performance enhancers. Campbell-Brown will resume competition next month among 23 Jamaican athletes for the World Indoor Championships in Poland. And that's it for this edition of Jamaica Now, your weekly review of the big news stories. Send us your comments at online feedback at gleanerjm.com. You may tune in to Power 106 FM for regular updates. Follow us on Twitter at Jamaica Gleaner and on Facebook at Gleaner Jamaica. I'm Damian Mitchell, and as we go, more from the public forum, Death Squads in the Force. One of my very first wake-up calls, that something is dramatically wrong. I was downtown Kingston working with them soldiers, and we had a call on the radio that there was a mentally deranged man. I found the light about this case. It's, it's one of those cases that touches the human heart if you have one. We were called to a mentally disturbed man who was causing some problems in Carnation Market. We were on foot patrol. I walked with my three soldiers and we went to the scene. I saw a young man in his 20s with a half a machete in his waist, mentally disturbed apparently. He was, he was clean. Uh, up to this point that I saw him, he was very clean. Not one of those who was walking mad on the street. But something triggered off in his head and he started behaving boisterously. So the market people got concerned and they called. When I went there, another group was already there, another one police officer with three soldiers. And we tried to surround the man to hold him, to disarm him. One soldier took his SLR off his soldier and just stand, asked us to step back. And I couldn't believe, I didn't know he was going to do it. I thought this man wanted to frighten the gentleman. And he shot him in his head. I witnessed that. I saw the pole of the man's chin being torn off with the SLR bullet. And he fell in the gutter, in the dirty water. I watched his teeth. Everything flew past me in the water. And I felt like crying. The man was helpless, was sick. And I was forced to say that here is somebody who attacked the police with a machete. Not the police, the security forces. In this case, it was done by a soldier. But to be honest with you, my organization, the JCF, didn't play a role where the world wanted to know the truth. The whole investigation was geared toward defending the, the, the people who were on the operation.